Unplug the washer from the wall outlet. Turn off the water supply to the washer. Disconnect the ground wire from the outer tub front panel. If the washer has the boosted hot option, disconnect the wire harness from the heating element. Mark the clamp ring and outer tub front panel for reinstallation. Loosen the nut, washers, and screw holding the clamp ring to the outer tub front panel. Remove the rubber seal from the outer tub front panel. Discard the seal and remove the panel. Remove the ground wires from the rear of the cabinet. Remove the screws holding the control shield to the cabinet. Slide the control shield over the tub to access the pulley. Run the belt off the pulley while slowly turning the pulley. Remove the belt from the motor shaft. Remove the left hand thread cap screw, lock washer, and flat washer holding the pulley to the inner basket shaft. The cap screw can be accessed through the hole in the rear panel by removing the plug in the rear panel. Discard the left hand thread cap screw. A new one must be used during reinstallation. Remove the pulley from the shaft. Carefully remove the inner basket through the front of the washer. Before removing the bearing housing, note the position of the pressure hose, hose clips, mounting plates, and housing drain hole so the parts can be reinstalled in the same position. Remove the three screws holding the bearing housing arms to the outer tub. While supporting the rear bearing housing, remove the three screws holding the bearing housing to the rear of the outer tub. Remove the bearing housing. Apply part number 27604P anti-seize compound to the area of the trunning shaft that will be contacting the new front and rear bearings. 
Apply a film of grease to the area of the shaft that will be contacting the bearing housing seal. Make sure the bearing housing seal is packed with lubrication in all grooves. If it is not, pack the seal with grease in all grooves. Use a thread tap to clean the old Loctite out of the pulley screw receiving hole before installing a new cap screw. This ensures that the inner basket and pulley properly seat. Place the new bearing housing onto the rear of the outer tub. Make sure the drain hole is facing down. Replace and tighten the three arm bolts and torque them to 250 inch pounds. Be sure to replace the mounting plates and pressure hose clips. Replace and tighten the three inner bolts and torque them to 150 inch pounds. Route the pressure hose under the right arm and attach the hose to the pressure hose clip. Route the pressure hose to the hose mounting plate and clip on the top arm. Make sure there is no slack between these two points. All the excess pressure hose slack must be collected between the top hose mounting plate on the bearing housing arm and the pressure hose clip on the control shield. Install the inner basket assembly by pushing it all the way into the outer tub. Slightly pull out the inner basket about one quarter inch to ensure that the bearing housing seal lips are not rolled over. If the inner basket is pulled out more than one eighth of an inch past the step on the trunnion shaft, pull out the basket and repeat this procedure. Fully reset the inner basket. When installing the pulley, always use a new cap screw that has a Loctite patch to prevent the screw from loosening during operation. Replace the pulley onto the inner basket shaft and attach with a new left hand thread cap screw with a Loctite patch. Torque the new cap screw 240 minimum to 260 maximum inch pounds. Be careful not to push the trunnion shaft forward while tightening the screw. Place the belt on the motor pulley. Run the belt onto the pulley. Rotate the pulley until the belt is properly centered. Adjust the belt tension if required. Working through the lower front of the washer, place a locking pliers on the metal rod of the motor assembly and loosen the two adjusting bolts and the two pivot bolts. Pull down on the motor to increase the belt tension. Use a Burroughs belt gauge to obtain proper tension. Proper belt tension is obtained when the belt can be deflected approximately one quarter inch from the normal position when moderate pressure, 50 to 60 pounds, is applied to a point midway between the motor and the inner basket pulleys. After proper belt tension has been obtained, tighten the belt adjusting bolts firmly. Then tighten the pivot bolts. Slide the control shield back into place in the rear of the control cabinet. Replace the screws holding the shield to the cabinet. Reattach the ground wires to the rear of the cabinet. Reinstall the outer tub front panel, clamp ring, and new seal. Always use a new seal. Spray or apply a mixture of diluted dish soap to assist in the installation of the new seal. The puffy side of the seal should be installed to the inside. Install the tub front panel with the dimple at the 12 o'clock position. When reinstalling the tub front, make sure that the inside opening on the tub front is evenly centered with the opening on the inner basket. 
Install the clampering screw with the threads and nut facing downward. Always use a new nut. Install the metal clamp ring by placing the clamp ring opening at approximately the 10 o'clock position to ensure no interference is encountered with the side panel or the underside of the control cabinet or cabinet top. Tap the clamp ring all around while tightening the screw and nut. Tighten the screw and nut until a spacing of one inch is achieved at the clamp ring opening. Reconnect the ground wire to the outer tub front panel. If the washer has the boosted hot option, reconnect the wire harness to the heating element.